going on, everybody? Welcome to episode two of Rec Bike Reveal. You're probably wondering, Chase, why is the monster still in your garage? Two, what are you riding? And three, what are we doing today? We're doing a lot of awesome stuff, and it's uh, going to be a bit of a tease for most of you guys, but you $15 uh, production team, crew, whatever I call you guys, <laughs> $15 Rec Bike Reveal people, uh, we're window shopping for the brand new bike. Going to be a fun day. Now, what is all this other stuff? Uh, and why is the monster still here? Should probably answer those questions because the dude's getting here to pick the monster up right now. Actually, was that him that just texted me? So, what's going on everybody? Welcome to episode two of Wrecked Bike Rebuild. That is the monster from episode series, I guess. Series one of Wrecked Bike Rebuild. Ironically, it's actually getting shipped out today, so this will be the last video you see that monster in. Actually, that's a lie. I got a video coming out on Thursday where I do, I did like a video on that bike as I rode it home. But after that, that'll be the last video. Also, my little bicycle. Let me show you. So this little guy is a Saunders X Fold or Fold X, something like that. It's an electric bicycle <laughs> and that company has sent it out to me. I'm going to do a video on it, but I thought it would be the perfect thing to uh, have for today's video and I'll explain to you what that's going to be. But first, it has a name. GPS says one hour away, you son of a... The shipping company just uh, texted me and said he's one hour away. So <laughs> we got plenty of time to hang out and chill. So this little guy I call the mini monster. Can you, can you guess why? Yeah, that's because it's a black frame with red wheels <laughs> and it is what will end up being the only thing left in this garage from the monster. But don't they look the same? It's a bit of a downgrade, I will say. <laughs> okay, anyway, so that's the little X-Fold. I'll do some, I'm gonna do some funny little review video down the road. Don't know when that's gonna come out, but I am really excited about this little electric bike. So, I'm gonna... <coughs> so you're probably asking yourself, Chase, what are we gonna be doing today that has to do with wreck bike rebuild? Well, that's a fantastic question. So, uh, for you guys that came to my meetup this year, this year? Yeah, it was this year. Gosh, time flies. Uh, there is a Mountain Motorsports that does Kawasaki stuff. And if you guys didn't see episode one, watch episode one because I'm about to spoil something. Okay, if you didn't click away, it's your fault. So, in episode one, I showed you guys that I won the bid on the ZX-10. It's a 2017 ZX-10 that we're going to be working on for Wreck Bike Rebuild Season 2. So... The normal Mountain Motorsports location I go to is in Roswell. They don't have any Kawasaki bikes, sad times. But the location in Buford is a massive factory. Not a factory, but like place is huge. It's the same place I had my meetup at this year. They have Kawasaki. So I text the, uh, the guy that runs the Buford location. I was like, hey man, so probably gonna be purchasing a brand new 2017 ZX-10 from you guys. Do you care if I come and window shop with my new little electric motorcycle, bicycle, thing? He said, yeah, man, come on up. And I was like, so you're cool with me riding a little electric bike around just shop and looking at ZX-10s? He's like, yeah, no big deal. Looking forward to it. So what we're going to do today is ride, or well, we're going to drive this thing to Mountain Motorsports in Buford and go see what uh, brand new 2017 uh, ZX-10s look like. If you guys are curious why we're going to go look at a brand new ZX-10, because you're probably like, Chase, wreck bike rebuild is supposed to be a wrecked bike. A brand new bike is not a wrecked bike. This is blasphemy. You would be correct, but if you're on my production team and you're supporting at $15 per episode, then you may get the opportunity to buy a brand new 2017 ZX-10 for a ridiculously low amount. Hashtag a George Washington. But if you're curious about the tier system and how Wrecked Bike Rebuild works and is funded, by all means, go watch episode one. Or if you're really excited, check the Patreon link down below. Without further ado, I'm going to go probably ride this thing around for a little while while I wait on this dude to get here to take this monster because... I'm really excited to go check out some ZX-10s. I can't decide if I'm going to take my tracksuit or not. Probably should. That would be that'd be really smart. Oh shit. There is not enough room in this garage to ride an electric bike around. 
Still doesn't stop me, though. Why? Why is it... Burnout! Oh my god. I can do a burnout. Oh, the review video is going to be so much better of that thing. <laughs> so yeah, this episode should be really freaking fun, and it will pass the time until our ZX-10, the wrecked one, comes in, which is supposed to come in when this video actually goes live. Fingers crossed, very excited. Let's go check out some new bikes, and I'm going to show you guys how freaking huge this place is. Whoa, slow down there, cowboy. Future chase here, guys. I apologize for past Chase. He was really excited to go see that brand new ZX-10. And as of editing this video that I'm doing right now, uh, realized that I didn't even update you guys with what was happening with that show because I'm trying to take you guys through the entire process. So I'm going to fill in for him because, you know, he's just a he's just a kid. He doesn't know. So the last time I talked to you guys, we had won the bid on the 2017 ZX-10. And that's where I kind of left you guys. So after you win a bid process, here's what happens with Dash Hub as far as like how you get your motorcycle. One, they're gonna send you like a congratulations, you won the bid email. And it's gonna have, by the way, all of this stuff is in instructions that you get emailed to you, so it's not like you're gonna have to remember this shit. But they're gonna send you an email and say, you need to wire transfer, like bank transfer, the remaining amount to us to pay for the motorcycle. So after you send your little wire transfer, whatever thing, there's a document you have to sign. You have to actually sign in a couple places and you have to send a photo of your driver's license to Dash Hub. That's how they get your address and all your information so they can switch your title over. Once they get that information and they get your wire transfer, they mail you your title super freaking fast and they get transportation figured out because Dash Hub is like nationwide and I think not worldwide yet, but they're nationwide. And so they're sending out like motorcycles from all these different locations. So they take care of all of the transport from the uh, auction house or wherever the bike is auctioned off at. All you have to do, sign that paperwork. Somebody's here. And, uh, hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh, UPS, you know exactly when I'm recording. So all you gotta do is sign that paperwork that they send you in a couple places and send them your driver's license and they handle everything from there. Literally the next thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a phone call from the shipping company, which is what I got today. That's why I like jumped to answer the door because our new bike is coming in today. You guys won't see it till episode three, but you know, I mean like, I gotta go edit this into this video after I record this. So we own like the cusp. So yeah, that's really all you have to do after you win the bid. You wire transfer it, you uh, sign the paperwork that they send you, and send them a copy of your driver's license over email, like a little photo of it. And that's really all you do. They handle the rest of it, which is absolutely fantastic. I know a lot of you guys were commenting about the fees, but for one, company got to run. Two, I don't have to do anything. I sign documents and then a bike shows up. Like that convenience factor, so freaking awesome. I would much prefer that. Anyway, back to the video. Let's go catch back up to past Chase going to check out a brand new ZX-10. Should be fun times. Time travel in, go. I don't know if I told you guys, but this electric bicycle can also fold in half. Pretty freaking dope. I really am ridiculously obsessed with this little bike. Okay, let's go look at real motorcycles. So when I get in here, I need to find a guy named Nick. Nick knows that I'm here and I'm gonna ride around the store <laughs> with a camera and uh, an electric bicycle. I don't think anybody else knows that, okay. so cool okay I've been told I can do this by the way so we just got to find Nick because otherwise this is gonna be really awkward I have a little electric bicycle 
Nick told me I could ride this around the store. Absolutely. That's what I thought. I thought Absolutely, I was man. like, you know what? If anybody's going to let me do this, it's going to be these guys. I've seen these. Yeah, that's so why. You can, um, like, pop that open. and then The whole electric motorcycle slash electric assisted bicycle market yeah. has really, really intrigued me for the past few years. Yes. Did you hear Yamaha announced in 2018 they are going to enter the electric assisted bicycle market. Let me be the first one to say I will ride an electric Yamaha bicycle <laughs> if I'm offered the opportunity. Could you do me a favor and tell me where I would be able to find a 2017 ZX-10? You know, just casual. This is the most steady shot I've ever gotten with a camera. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Complete with a uh, Two Brothers slip-on and a Puet. Huh. Which great. We had it. I'm also going to buy a brand new one and sell that to somebody for a dollar. That's awesome. You don't have Fun to pedal to get it started? No, no, not at all. This is so much harder than it looks. Want to take a spin? Fast. <laughs> I love electric motor torque. Yes, right? And it's like just it's a silent. Awesome. And it's way better to ride around here with that thing than having to walk and look at all these bikes. <laughs> look how big of a place you guys have. It's just 55,000 square feet. 55,000? Total square building, feet. yeah. So guys, this is the 2017 ZX-10. I don't know if this place is gonna have this exact model when we get to the end of the series, but cue cinematic looking shots while I get somebody to tell you guys about this freaking motorcycle. Because if you remember, this is the same model that we're gonna be working on. It's salvaged and wrecked a little bit, but uh, same thing. It's <laughs> been crazy. All right. I'm like wanting to pedal. Oh, so like even if you start pedaling, yeah, it'll go even faster. This video is so quickly becoming a look at my electric bicycle video. <laughs> I'm Leo. 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 Well, you're going to be on a YouTube video. Awesome. Hopefully you're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. This is a pretty rad bike. What it kind of brings to the table, and I always tell people that when they are upgrading from like a 600 to this bike, there's one thing you're going to notice off the bat. Of course it's a 1000, yes, it's going to be powerful, but the way that this thing brings power to the table <laughs> is unreal. And I, when I was talking about doing track and stuff like that, most people say it's kind of a tough bike to handle because of how much power. Kind of like the Ducati gotcha. that brings so much torque to the table. It's not as much torque as that, yeah. but when you ride it, it does pour it on. You got to be ready for it. <laughs> so with the KRT version, of course, you're getting the World Superbike uh, Levery on okay. the bike, so it's really matching up to what you see actually racing on the TV. What they've changed and actually brought that's new to the, the table, speaking on World Superbike, is their World Superbike style suspension. Honestly, you're looking at it hey, like, look, what is this If this, this guy gives do? you any issues at all, you let me know. I never never <laughs> trust a New York and you can't ever figure out what they're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> But the World Superbike suspension, honestly, it's got a, a other overcast had a reservoir right here that holds even more oil. It actually gives you more uh, compression and also more feedback at the limit, at the limit that, of the braking. That looks yes. intense. It is, yeah. it is. There's also a lot more adjustability there. For, so for your really experienced track riders that are really gonna be honing this thing in for a track ride, gotcha. this brings so much more feedback and so much more adjustments to the table than your regular bike. Um, and honestly, <laughs> a only, regular bike yeah. points to a 1,000 double R. You know, just hey, you guys over hey, here. I'm not hundred. saying it. The riders <laughs> are saying it, okay? Um, <laughs> um, you also got some good uh, braking systems. Of course, we all know Brembo is going to be the number one I think braking I've, I've system heard, out there. I've I think heard of them, yeah. Maybe. A few people smidgets, have. Smidgets. <laughs> uh, you know, one, one rider out there might have yeah, it. Yeah. But uh, they give you very a lot more feedback. I've heard from people that... Ride, you know, your regular Takikyo brakes and Nesson brakes, and they come on to a Brembo, 
and it's just the feel. It's very light touch to the feel yep. for the experience of the hard braking. You also got with just kind of thinking about the electronical package, since we're on the braking system, you do have ABS brakes. Um, you can turn those on and off. You also have a nice traction control system that you can set up with many different levels. If you're on a rainy day or something like that and you need the, all the assists you can with a powerful bike like this, you don't want that tire to slip out whatsoever, yeah. bloop, 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 bloop. turn the traction control up, yeah. you don't got to worry about it. But your friend want to race, you want to <laughs> pop a wheelie, <laughs> click, 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 turn that stuff down yeah. and you're ready to go with it. So it's got some of the most advanced, uh, you know, ABS and traction control packages that most other riders and most of the motorcycles have in it now. Gotcha. I would tell you, come and take a look at the gauge. Honestly, it's one of my favorite gauges. Um, I know everything's going to that big, you know, Yamaha, uh, Suzuki, Moto GP display. Yeah. But the fact that as you rev these lights right here, just light up, it actually is a cool feeling and, and a cool red. sensation. <laughs> yeah, versus just seeing in the, like a regular either TAC or computer generated on a, L, a TFT display going up. These orange lights light up, and it, it, it's it's kind of cool feeling, man. All the way from you know 1,000 RPMs all the way up to 13. I know most people probably see these things on bikes and like, what the heck is this? I I have one on my bike, and it's actually saved me in a lot of occasions. But it's a Olin steering stabilizer, and what that brings to the table is if you're either in a racing situation or you're pulling a wheelie or if you just hit a dang pothole. A lot of people hear about when they're starting to ride all oh, these tank slappers that you get into. This cuts it out. It's also electronically controlled. So as you get faster, this actually hardens the steering a little bit. So if you do go over a bump or something like that, come down from Willie, go over a pothole, if this right here happens, it just cuts it all the way out and you're riding straight again. They also make in different packages that you can actually add a little bit more performance. They got a winter package version that actually you can also get the upgraded pistons and heads. It's actually the same package. Because that's what you're going to need. Yeah. Right? You're like, God, mm -hmm. it's going to be lacking more power. power. <laughs> come on. They've done a really good job on this and you can see they've also kind of did a different way with the um, suspension there. And a lot of people are moving more to that horizontal way of suspension. One, it kind of really frees up a little bit of space, but also cuts out a lot of the unneeded motion in the suspension and can really dial it in a lot better. Well, now, I really appreciate all the information because yeah. I had no clue. Now we all know Heck more yeah. about the ZX-10. Heck yeah, man. Well, I appreciate Thanks. the info, man. Yeah, bro. Appreciate you coming into the store, bro. <laughs> I'm going to go... Uh, shoot some cinematic looking stuff and then probably ride around on this uh, little electric bicycle. Do it, man. <laughs> I'm going to point people in your direction and be like, hey, he owns the place. <laughs> right? Right? So that's the 2017 ZX-10. Um, we're now going to ride around on this bicycle and talk about it. If you guys see me go down, just like point and laugh. If you don't want to be in the video, I can shoot enough stuff to where it's only your audio. You're good? All right. In that case, you'll be a YouTube star by Tuesday. <laughs> This is my epic write-off after I said that. <laughs> All right, we're set up now. I'm just gonna keep riding around the store and look at these uh, R1s over here. Okay, so that was the 2017 ZX-10. That could be one of the motorcycles uh, that we are selling at the end of the series. <laughs> Good lord, that motorcycle. Look at it. It is a good looking bike, my god. So like I said, if you're curious about the ZX-10 and why we're looking at that, highly recommend you go watch episode one. Uh, this is probably not going to make any sense if you don't see that. What is this thing? This is awesome. Also a huge shout out to Mountain Motorsports in Buford. That's where we currently are. This place is absolutely massive, hence being able to ride around a little electric pedal bike in here. This is their like Kawasaki location, that's why I came here, because my, my guys over in Roswell don't have as many Kawasaki's. Dang, oh, BMW R9T, I'm about to flip this camera, hopefully I don't drop it. Dang, son. That's such a freaking cool motorcycle, holy crap, it's like brand new cafe racer. This thing is twitchy on five, my god. All right, camera switch, three, two, goodbye.
right, so these poor customers are looking at me all awkward. I am, oh my God, I'm gonna ride outside and then we can finish up this video. So I'm filming all this. I don't know what any of these shots look like, but from what I can tell just looking, it looks pretty awesome when I like pan past something. So I'm gonna keep that whole thing going. Let's go have a top speed run on the little electric bike while we talk wreck bike rebuild. So yeah guys, that was episode two of wreck bike rebuild. Oh God. Now hopefully we all know a little more about the ZX-10. Powerful as shit, has a lot of electronics that make it awesome and bumps. And uh, it looks like I'm probably gonna be buying the brand new one from uh, the Buford location of uh, Mountain Motorsports. I'm just curious how many times I can ride past that cop until they say something to me. So, a couple questions. One, what do you guys think about the electric bike? I think it's, it's a freaking blast. Two, are you hyped for a 2017 ZX-10 sell-off? Sell-away. I don't know what I'll call it. Something like that. Are you excited that somebody is going to get a brand new ZX-10 for a freaking dollar? I think it's awesome. Also, huge shout out to all you guys over on Patreon. You, as you know, are making history. Well, not maybe not history, but you are making the Wreck Bike Rebuild series possible. You are helping me learn how to work, motor, work on motorcycles and spread the love of two-wheeled stuff. You know what I mean? More people get to ride on two wheels than when I can sell them bikes for a dollar. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I appreciate you being part of Wreck Bike Rebuild on the Patreon page if you are. And if you're not, make sure to go check it out. It's a good time. The community that we have over on Patreon and Discord is fantastic. The Discord especially has been absolutely crazy. Uh, there's just like all types of conversations. Oh, speaking of Discord, uh, so what I'm going to be doing now, we have a community rebuilds page over on Discord, and every episode of Wreck Bike Rebuild, I want to start shouting out somebody that's doing some work on their bike. So, for this episode, since I was so rushed to get here, I totally forgot to grab one, but I'll pick one in the post, in post and editing and all that kind of stuff. For this episode, here is the person we're going to be showcasing. So yeah, that's just one member of a ton of people we have over on Discord. I highly recommend you going and checking it out. And you can get access to the Discord page by uh, supporting this series over on Patreon. I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting this series. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to hit that like button now that we all know more about the bike that will be coming in. Speaking of the bike coming in, it is going to be here supposedly when this video comes out on Tuesday. I am super excited about it. On the next episode of Wreck Bike Rebuild Season 2, we're going to be investigating this bike and seeing how much work we're going to have to do. It, uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Hope you guys are ready for it. It'll be coming out next Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. I can't find the kickstand of a baby bike. The baby monster. Baby monster? Mini monster. That's what I called it. I'm Chase on two wheels. This is Wreck Bike Rebuild Season 2 2017 Kawasaki ZX-10. I'm hyped, man. Really excited. Love you guys. I will see you on the next video, which will be on a Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, because that's when I make videos every damn week. You guys go out there and ride positive. Bye.